Hey, Ferdy. Yeah? Why should you go and talk to a JavaScript developer when you're feeling a bit sad? I don't know. Why? Well, so that they can console you. Console you? <laughs> Hey, Headless WordPress community. In this episode, um, I wanted to share with you uh, what I think a lot of developers get wrong when considering going with a headless WordPress setup over a traditional one. So recently I was browsing the Twitter sphere, as one does, and I came across a thread where some developers were talking about using Gatsby JS um, and pairing it with a headless WordPress backend. Uh, Gatsby, if you're not familiar, is this super popular React-based framework um, for building statically rendered apps. Um, it has uh, one unique thing about it is it has a um, this unified GraphQL data layer, uh, so that at build time, when your uh, app is being built, you can query for and pull in um, data from a number of different sources. So you can have uh, WordPress as as one source and pull in data from there. You can pull in data from Contentful or from um, the YouTube API or Twitter API or you know you name it and you can kind of stitch all of that all of those uh, things together all of that data um, into your you can use it uh, to render your React components and ultimately build up a static version of your app that's sitting on a CDN ready to be served up to users uh, and it's a really great you know uh, choice for a um, JavaScript front end to pair with your headless WordPress back end. Um, so anyways, these developers in the thread were talking about using Gatsby with the headless WordPress setup um, as the only source for, for the data. And I saw a very experienced, very seasoned WordPress developer chime in uh, to the conversation and say something like, well, if, you know, if WordPress is the only source for, for the data for the Gatsby site, then I don't really see the point of even going for the headless approach. Like, why wouldn't you just have a traditional WordPress site and apply some full page caching to it to achieve, you know, lightning quick um, speeds. To break it down a little more, this this seasoned and um, experienced, you know, WordPress developer who chimed into the conversation, his argument goes something like this. If it, it's going to take me a certain amount of time and level of effort to build a traditional WordPress site and an increased amount of level of effort and time uh, to do a headless setup using a Gatsby front end, and in the end, I'm going to get the same page load speed uh, either way I go, then why would I ever choose the headless approach that's gonna take me uh, more um, more time and have some more complexity to wire up? Why would I ever choose that if in the end, it's a wash? The two end up you know, with the same, uh, giving you the same end result, right? Um, so I read this and thought to myself, this person saying that, have I and others in the headless WordPress community just been spinning our wheels, um, wasting time, you know, finding, trying to find solutions to problems that have already been solved in the past, right? Um, but really, I, th I think the kind of conclusion I quickly came to, and I hope you will too, is that um, that kind of argument is very short-sighted. The big problem with it is that it assumes that page load speed is the only thing that matters. Um, and there are a host of other ones. Uh, in my mind, going for a headless approach, what it really allows you to do is modernize um, your application. You benefit from all of these lessons the web development community has learned over the past several years. You get to uh, use those in your project while still giving your content creators and, and content managers the WordPress backend and the nice authoring and editing experiences uh, that it provides, especially now that Gutenberg is a thing and uh, they're really doubling down on that editing experience. You get to keep all of those parts of WordPress, but um, on the front end and for your data layer and so on, you get a lot of advancement. And as I said, you get to benefit from a lot of the lessons the WordPress community has learned or the web development community at large has learned over the last several years. So with that, let's break down a few of them now. Uh, this won't be a comprehensive list, but just what I think are a few of the most important ones. Benefit number one is a component-based architecture. If you've been in the web development community for a while, uh, you probably remember the previous best practice um, that many people still use, uh, and that is relegating files or separating files by their type within your projects. 
Um, so you would have uh, all of your um, templates in, in one section uh, of your application. You have all your styles, like your SAS partials and so on, in one part of your application, separate from that. And then in a, a third location, uh, you'd have JavaScript files. Um, and it was quite common to use a build tool like uh, Gulp or Grunt to go through and you know, stitch those files together to con concatenate them and minify them and then spit out just a small number of um, style sheets and JavaScript files that would ultimately be served up to your end users. Um, and that, you know, worked okay, uh, but some genius um, engineers on, on the Facebook engineering team kind of questioned that convention a few years ago and decided uh, that they wanted to try a component-based architecture. And that became the foundation of among other things, um, what React became and why that framework was so revolutionary. Um, so React came, with, came up with this, uh, it introduced this component-based architecture idea where you would have um, one file and then commingled in that file, you would have all of the markup and all of the styles and then all of the JavaScript that that particular component of the site needs. Uh, from there, you could you know you treat those as puzzle pieces and kind of compose them together um, to create your, your whole component tree that is used to build up every, you know, page, uh, that the application has. Um, this was pretty revolutionary. It, it kind of shined a light on the fact that, uh, the way we were previously doing things, where we were separating files by their type in our projects, the templates, the styles, and the JavaScript, uh, it kind of exposed that as something that didn't provide a true separation of concerns. Um, instead, in practice, what it actually did is just make the parts of your site that are interrelated more spread out. This kind of setup makes it difficult to move quickly and make changes. Um, if, for example, I had a, a login form and um, I needed to make a change to that, I needed to add some additional fields, style them, and add some JavaScript for um, some user interactions, I would need to go to at least three different places in my app to make those changes. Uh, in the component, architecture world, um, those would be centralized in one location. So I could go there and tweak the, the markup and the styles and the JS um, all from that one spot. Uh, it also makes, you know, deleting code um, in the future super easy as well. If that component was no longer necessary, I would just look for any places in my app where it's being imported and, and remove those. And then I would grab the component itself and just delete it, knowing that the Markup, styles, and JavaScript are all being cleanly removed from my project. So it's a big win in terms of, uh, in terms of you know organizing your app and also maintainability going forward. Um, if you get to benefit from this component-based architecture that single-page apps and, and React um, have introduced. Benefit number two is route-based code splitting. Uh, if you're in the WordPress world and building things in the traditional way using WordPress's uh, templating. You can't do this. You have to ship to the user um, everything that they might need for all pages of the site. Um, there are some exceptions to that. You can bundle certain um, style sheets or a certain JavaScript file that's only needed for one page. You could separate that, uh, but by and large, the common practice out there is to have one style sheet that you serve up um, to the user that it, it contains all the files that they might need for the whole site. Uh, and if you do any kind of audit, like in, you know, the Chrome dev tools, if you do a lighthouse audit, for instance, uh, you'll see that you score pretty, pretty poorly on, um, the, uh, amount of unused code, you know, cause on that first initial visit to a traditional WordPress site, giving the user this style sheet that contains every style for everything site wide, um, and, you know, only even if a fourth or a fifth of it applies to the current page, they're still kind of paying the cost of downloading all, all of those styles, even though most of them aren't needed. If you are going for a headless WordPress approach though, and you're using a single page application uh, for your front end, it unlocks um, this ability to do route-based code splitting. So that means your app is aware of all of the styles and all of the JavaScript needed for the current page only, and can serve those up uh, without the rest um, without the rest of the styles and JS that aren't needed. And this is huge. Uh, this means for users visiting a particular route um, on your site, they'll get everything they need for that particular um, page 
but won't pay the cost of of you know downloading all the styles in JS for the other pages. Uh, so this idea that that the application and the build tool that you're using to generate the assets, uh, that it's aware of what all the routes are in your app and what assets are needed um, for that, uh, what JavaScript and, and styles are needed for that particular route and to build a bundle just with everything needed, nothing less, nothing more, that's a huge benefit and something you, you get if you go for the headless approach as well. Benefit number three is lightning fast page transitions. Uh, this is kind of what single page apps are known for, right? In the traditional uh, WordPress world, um, when the user clicks a link, that represents another round trip back to the server. So the user clicks on a link, a request is sent to the server, the data is fetched, the templating is done, and then a response comes back, and then finally that can be shown to the user. That, that pops up in their browser. Uh, with single page apps though, a lot of those round trips become unnecessary and the app just has this very snappy um, route transitions, this very app-like feel to it. Um, so not a ton more to say there, but just it's a huge benefit to have, have uh, very quick transitions between routes. Benefit four is a future-proof backend API. Let's say um, you have a client project and you build it in the traditional WordPress way uh, where you use the PHP-based templating system that ships with WordPress. Uh, so you deliver the site to the client. They're, they're really pleased with it. It looks great, uh, functions exactly how it should. Everything's fantastic. A um, few months go by. That client comes to you and they say, hey, we actually, you know, our business is doing great. We actually want to launch um, iOS and Android apps, and we want them to be able to source their data from our WordPress backend. Um, are you able to do that for us to, to you know, pull that data out? How much additional work would that be beyond what you've done already? Right? If you receive this request and you built the website in the traditional way, you might think this is a huge undertaking. Right? I'm going to have to build um, using either the REST API or, or GraphQL, build out all of the um, endpoints, all of the resources, res you know, serve up all the JSON data, the raw data needed for these uh, mobile applications because I've really done none of that. Right? All I've done is queried the database, um, and used WordPress's templating system to build out the pages. Really, none of that work is done yet. It's it's a brand new project. It's a huge undertaking. Um, alternatively, if initially you had gone for a headless WordPress setup where you had your WordPress backend that served up um, JSON data and provided the API, and then separate from that, you had a single page JavaScript application that consumed that, all of a sudden, a lot of the work is already done. So this client who came to you and said, oh yeah, we want to expand beyond the website. Uh, we want to expand and we want um, some mobile apps and so on. How much work would that be for, for you to provide the data that those mobile apps will need? Your answer would be a lot of it's already done. It wouldn't be, you know, um, that much of a stretch. We may need to add, you know, add a few tweaks in if these mobile apps have some requirements that the website didn't. However, most of the content uh, that the website that our backend serves up to our, our JavaScript app, those same endpoints, that same data could be used uh, to serve up the data to the iOS and Android app. So we're, we're nearly ready already uh, at this point to, to add support for that. Um, so that's a huge deal as well. It, it, um, it makes me think that building sites in the traditional um, way using WordPress to do the templating is kind of locking you into that data only being used for the website and used nowhere else. So if the if the the client or your company or whatever comes to you and says, "Oh yeah, we have a a partnership, um, and they're going to font feature some of our content over here," can we pull the data out of our site and have it over there? Or the mobile app example I gave. In any of those scenarios, you're just already ready for them. If you have this back WordPress backend that serves up uh, the JSON data, it's ready to go. Fifth benefit I have for you is career. The fact of the matter is the web is moving and, and changing and uh, a lot of technologies involved in the headless WordPress stack are in demand. Um, so if you are looking around for, for jobs as a developer um, down the road and you know you get questions like, oh, you're familiar with React or Vue or, or modern JavaScript frameworks like that? Because that's what our project requires. Or are you familiar with um, building out GraphQL endpoints to serve up data because we need that to power 
not only our uh, web app, but also we have mobile apps and so on. Do you know how to do that? Do you have experience with, with those technologies? If your answer is, well, not really. I've only ever built websites using a CMS like WordPress and using its built-in PHP-based, you know, templating engine. I don't really have any experience with this, you know, modern um, front-end stuff and uh, with the tooling involved, all the ecosystem involved with with doing um, a headless setup. I think you'll be less marketable than you would be if you do gain experience with those things. Um, on the flip side, if you're not a developer, maybe you're an agency or something like that, you'll probably have an easier time attracting talent and attracting developers if you tell them, you know, hey, if you if you work here, you get to work with and use all the cutting edge technology and it's going to really going to advance you and, and build your skill set in a big way. So the main takeaway from this video is that you shouldn't get hung up on just page load speed. Uh, if you're looking at a he headless WordPress setup compared to a traditional WordPress setup and you're comparing, you know, applying page caching and how quickly the sites can load, and you're making your decision just based on that. You're not considering a number of other factors that you really should be. Um, I've outlined, outlined five in this video that I think are the most important, but really there are lots more to consider beyond that. So with that, that kind of begs the question, well, how do I know what all those other factors to consider are and how will I possibly keep them all in mind when I'm making this decision for my next project, whether to make it in the traditional WordPress way versus a, a headless way? Um, and that is a good lead in to my next video. In my next video, I plan to introduce this, this tool, uh, to help you make that decision. So it'll be a series of questions that you answer about your project and it will try to, it'll do its best to give you a recommendation for whether that project is best suited for a traditional WordPress setup or best suited for a headless setup. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, the idea is it'll help you to make that decision and know which way to go on your next project. Did you like that? Go ahead and push that like button. Subscribe.